Good evening, folks. I'm Zach Kaskagoon from the Grimdark Compendium, and tonight I would love to present you with a demonstration of Vilni Inc.'s Carrying Crimson, Colia Green, and Goon's Grime and their practical use in painting Grimdark flesh. But before we get started, I have a few updates regarding the Vilni Inc. launch that's scheduled for January 2024. Now, I'll be briefly reviewing the main topics in this video, but if you want to be in the know, please subscribe to our newsletter on the Grimdark Compendium website under the contact tab for more frequent and in-depth updates. As mentioned in the previous videos, I have the tools, the machines, and the wheel to start getting these orders out in January. We are ready to ship, save for one little bump in the road, and that bump is the completion of our safety data sheets. The SDS forms will detail the chemical makeup of our products, and this will be required to start shipping domestically and to our global partners that I'm happy to announce will be Element Games in the UK, PK Pro in Europe, and Grimdark Gaming in Australia. It shouldn't be long before these SDS forms are finished. The European company that's creating them for me has gone on holiday until early January, so shouldn't be much of a wait after that. And once we get them, we'll be ready to rock. So again, make sure to head over to the Grimdark Compendium, subscribe to our newsletter, check out the vast library of our Grimdark painting tutorials, and grab some Villainy Ink enamels while you're there. Now, let's dig into this evening's painting guide and see what it's all about. In this video, we will learn about horror-styled flesh applications. I will show you how to combine acrylics, inks, enamels, oils, and even glues to produce a highly varied and transparent flesh that reflects the proper levels of surface finish variations, which is significant in creature painting. So what we want to do to get started is first build a quick underpainting using just a couple of colors. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with Sage Stonal Res Primer from Badger. Now this primer has an off-white greenish tone to it, which is akin to Abtalung 502's Dead Flesh, which we will be using later on in the process, so this is going to pair up nicely with that when we're building a gross, sickly looking flesh. So I'm just going to apply this to the miniature in two thin coats. We'll allow about 20 minutes to dry, and then once that's on there and dry, we're going to then start to render some tonal variations onto the miniature. To do this, what I'm going to do is use a mixture of two colors. So I'm going to load up my airbrush with two parts Stonal Res Sage Primer and one parts Pro Acryl Transparent Brown. And as you can see, I'm just lightly feathering this brown color onto the miniature about the head and neck down the spinal cord a little bit onto the shoulders and feathering it lightly onto the rib area of the miniature. After this I'm going to clean out my airbrush and come back in with two parts of the transparent brown and one part of the sage primer so we'll get a little bit darker color and we're going to work this just on the top of the neck and the spinal cord and a little bit on the very top parts of the shoulders. And this will give us a nice gradual transition from the sage flesh to this deeper brown color up on the top of the miniature. So once I have those brown colors in place, I'm going to do something very similar with Caraburg Crimson. So I'm going to have a mixture here, two parts of the sage primer, one part of Caraburg Crimson from Citadel. And you can see that it gives it kind of this light pinkish tone, kind of meshes a little bit better with the sage and the lighter tonal variations of that brown. So we're just going to work those in right around the neck, around the head, and some areas around the wings, under muscle groupings. And then once we get that first initial pass on there, we're going to clean out the airbrush and then come in with just pure Caraburg Crimson and just render some steeper transitions. So as I was saying, this is just a really quick underpainting. We're just getting those colors into place. And this is going to help us realize the color scheme as we go. So we'll be using all these colors to kind of help us steer the direction and know where the transitions are going to be at later. So there's one thing I want to talk about real quick before I show the use of the Carrion Crimson from Villainy Inc. Now this is my original test bottle. I've had this for about eight months. And in about eight months, the paint has started to settle 
and kind of clump up on the bottom. So what I'm going to use is a sharp tool, something like a airbrush needle to kind of break it up, get it nice and broken up there, shake the devil out of it, and then make sure you keep the threads of the container clean as well. And another thing that's a good idea is to keep the pipette clean. Just use an old airbrush needle or something like that. And as a further note, the, the caps on these are childproof, so you do have to press them down to open them up. But it's important to keep those threads clean. It'll prolong the life of the paint. All right, so what we're gonna be doing with this Vilni Ink Carrion Crimson Wash is we're just gonna perform a simple unifying wash over all the areas of the miniature that we have based out. So we can add this on with a paintbrush, really simple. Just mix it down with one parts mineral spirits, apply it to the area you want to, and then you can feather out the edges with just mineral spirits if you need to. But the best way to apply these Villainy ink washes is through an airbrush. Particularly the Iowata HPCS Eclipse is probably the best airbrush for these washes. It has the 0.35 millimeter nozzle which handles the wash pretty well anything smaller kind of has trouble with it but the hpcs is pretty good so with the reductive technique and this unifying wash everything is just really simple and straightforward you have your miniature based out and you want to give it a quick simple wash so you just spray the color on and then you come back with a q-tip or a brush and mineral spirits and start to work it back off the miniature now, you can use a lot of mineral spirits during this step. It's not really gonna hurt anything. Just use a lot of mineral spirits and start working the wash back off. So the reductive technique and, the, and these washes, it, you know, this kind of thing has been around for a long time. I hear people that are kind of apprehensive to try it. You know, they're not too sure about it. They never used enamels before. To me, it's the best way to wash a miniature quickly. You just add it on and then wipe it off and it's really just that simple and then for enamels you're using mineral spirit so you want to flash that off so always just hit it with a blow dryer and then you can do subsequent removal passes like if you want to remove a little bit more just go back in do another removal pass typically the second removal pass doesn't require as much mineral spirits you know but you can work this all the way back down to the paint in most cases and then, you know, once you get it on there, it's just a really well done wash, has a lot of tonal variations, steep blends. And like I said, you can, in most cases, remove it all the way back off. Now, there's gonna be multiple opportunities later where we can use Carrion Crimson and other of the enamel washes to render this to completion, but there's a lot of work we gotta do to get there. So what we have so far is just the base colors and the unifying wash so that gives us some amount of a value sketch and we want to increase this value sketch by increasing the contrast so the next thing we're going to do is start adding highlights now for this i'm going to be using oils and this is the buff color from abtlung 502. now there's multiple ways to to build this up and add it on to the miniature and you do need to do it in multiple levels so what i just shown there was a more precise way of doing it and probably something you're more used to seeing where you go in and you carefully add highlights and with oils like I'm doing now you can just remove them back off decrease the opacity that's really the cool thing about oils but there's a better way to do this and that is what I call the scrubbing technique or some people call it dry brushing or over brushing and basically what this entails is just loading up your brush with oils working about 99% of those oils back off. You don't want this to be too thick of an application. And we're just gonna dry brush pretty heavily over the miniature. Now, the thing about oils, although they are pretty thin and they spread out fairly decent, they can build up. You run the risk of getting that nasty dry brush texture that's common with acrylic paints. So what we do to alleviate that with oils is we come in with a feathering brush. This brush is a soft bristled brush. It's clean, has no mineral spirits or anything like that. It's dry, no water, nothing. And we're just going to almost burnish the miniature. Almost burnish where we added those oils, scrub them in to the paint job, 
and that's going to smooth everything out and allow you to add multiple layers and everything will be nice and smooth and you don't run the risk of getting that nasty dry brush texture. So we're just going to do about three or four layers of this. Just keep building it up and in between every single layer we're going to scrub on the oil color and then we're going to come back with that clean dry brush and we're going to burnish it in. And when I'm burnishing, I'm doing it pretty hard. You can see that the miniature's shaking all around here. I'm doing this pretty hard. You know, everything up under this is gonna be dry and, and nothing's gonna come off. So we're just gonna work that paint into the miniature and that's gonna increase the contrast, further our value scale. And then we can do things like this where we load up the airbrush with a carrying crimson and come back on and start spraying in some deeper shadows, that sort of thing. Now. What I'm doing here is I'm just coming in with Vilna Inks Goons Grime and I'm just going to be working this top area. So you know that I wanted that top area to be brown, so I'm just reintroducing that there. We can also do things like glazes with acrylics. So what I have here in my airbrush is Reichlin Flesh Shade and this has a very different color than Carrion Crimson and it's just really good for flesh. So we're just going to do a little bit of glazing over those transitions and just building more and more tonal value. So after we have those tonal values on here, I'm going to start doing a glaze application through the airbrush. So this is a lot of glaze medium, Lamia medium, any kind of glaze medium from Windsor Newton would be fine, but this is probably about three parts glaze medium in the Sage primer that we originally used. And I'm just spraying over all of this. Now you don't want to spray this on to the point that it covers everything up. We want to retain that value sketch. So we've done all this work at this point with the base colors and the unifying washes and the glazes with other washes to get a, a value sketch. And we want to go back over top of that, but we want to leave a lot of that value sketch showing through. So this should be pretty transparent application. Just build it up in a couple layers. Try not to cover everything up and make sure that this step when you do this is done with acrylics. We'll do this again later with oils, but this part should be done with acrylics. And then after this is applied, we can go in and start using lighter applications of our enamel washes. So here I'm using Goons Grime, and Carrion Crimson, and we're just working some of those shadows back in. So we apply it, and once it's on there, we can get our brush with just mineral spirits and kind of blend out the edges and we're just going to start reinforcing our shadows working around the flesh here and just building more and more value and dimensions onto the miniature so this one i'm spraying right here is this is an enamel it's experimental right now it's nothing i've talked about or released but this will be part of the villain ink line and this is like a vivid orange red based off the Liquitech ink that is the vivid orange red. So that color is going to be fantastic in enamel form. So that's what this color is right here. And we're just going to simply glaze it onto the miniature. I'm not really going to remove anything here. I'm just going to use it as a filter effect, basically. And you can see where I'm working it, where we had those deep tones of carrying crimson. I'm just going to work it there. So around the head, around the neck under the muscles of the shoulders, a little bit of areas on the wings too. All right, so once I've gotten that onto the miniature, that vivid orange red, a little filter we just added, what I'm gonna do after this is I'm, I'm gonna reinforce this dark transition up here on the spinal cord and on the top of the neck. And what I'm gonna do this with is Goon's Grime through the airbrush. And I've got my PSI jacked way down. So this is like 10, five, maybe even five to 10 PSI because I want a spatter effect. So as it's coming out of the airbrush, it's spattering onto the miniature, and I'm letting those spatters get onto the skin and kind of look like freckles or modeling onto the skin. So the great thing about enamels is nothing is permanent unless you deem it so. So what we can do is come in with a Q-tip and a little bit of mineral spirits and kind of either remove some of the freckles all the way, or we can just tone their opacity down just by going over top of them with that q-tip and mineral spirits so after this now we can really start to render some of the highlighting on here and i'm just using the sage primer from Stano res 
and I'm thinning this down with alcohol. So this is thinned down with 90% alcohol. That makes it very translucent and easy to decimate the edges. So what I mean by decimating the edges is once we're transitioning over these darker areas or I'm transitioning up to the top of the miniature over the freckles that I have there, we can use the alcohol to ease the transitions, to go back over top of it again. If anything's too stark, we can just go back over it with a little bit of alcohol and it will completely remove it. It makes it work a little bit more like enamels. Now you gotta be careful with alcohol, it takes a practiced hand. You can remove your paint all the way back down to the plastic, but you just wanna be careful with that. So once I've rendered all these initial highlighting and I'm starting to get more and more detailed, this is about what we're looking like right here. And what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna go ahead and start using Colia Green from Villainy Ink to render some cool tones on here. So we have a lot of dark red tones, brown, and then the paleness of our flesh, but I wanna start using the Colia Green to render some cool tones onto the miniature. Now, the important thing about Colia Green, especially onto light colors like this, is you need to use very little of this ink. Okay, so this, this stuff sticks to a miniature like crazy. So when you're wanting to do very light filtering like this, you just use very small amounts of the Colia Green. So I'm gonna be using two different brushes for this. So I'll use one brush to apply it in the area that I want it to go. And then I'll come back in with another brush that's clean and only has mineral spirits on it to work the Colia Green around the miniature. So I'm working the opacity down, kind of letting it spread around the miniature a little bit and just removing little bits of it at a time. And this will give us a nice filter effect. That cool tone mixed in there is going to look great. Uh, just make sure, like I said, be very careful with this, especially over light tones. So you can really overdo it with this. This is a very strong pigmented color. So you need just very little. And if you want to build it up darker in some place, I suggest doing it in multiple layers, using lots of mineral spirits and just doing very light filter effects. And make sure if there's any runs, just to grab those with your brush. And then once we get that cool filter around the model, this is about what we're looking like right here. All right, so after this, I'm gonna show you a little bit of a crazy technique. Now, this is thoroughly explained in our Tyranids course about how to use this technique here. And this is using a super thin CA glue. Now, I'm just gonna go over all the areas that I've painted with this glue, very thinly applied and with a very particular brush. You need a certain brush to do this with. And like I said, all this is explained in detail in our Tyranids course, but this is a great technique to use over flesh. And what we'll do is we'll just go over all the areas that we've painted in a very thin layer of this glue. So the main purpose of this is to render surface finish variations. And also it's going to lock in everything you've done and make it permanent. So once I get this glue added on here, you can see everything's really bright, glossy at this point. And now I'm going to come back in and do another glaze pass, but this time I'm going to be using oil. So this is the dead flesh from Abtalung 502 mixed down with a ton of mineral spirits. So you can see me spritzing this on here. It's very transparent and it's going to soften everything up. I'm just going to apply it over the entire area that I've painted here very lightly. Now I might build it up in a couple more layers on the areas that I want more white, but uh, in general, very lightly done. So now we can remove this back off of the glue. And we want to make sure that the removal process is done with a dry Q-tip. Okay, so we don't want to use any mineral spirits here. So you'll quickly be able to see the difference between the dead flesh applied as a glaze. And as we remove it, you'll see the sage coming through is a different color. So this is gonna give us a slight variation in tonal difference. So the sage has a more sickly green color to it. 
and then the dead flesh is a little bit more bright a little bit more white it has a, a tiny bit of yellow content to it but overall compared to the sage it looks very white so after this is on here what we're going to do now is just come in with goons crime from villainy ink and we're just going to start rendering some more shadows some more filtering and i'm just adding it on here with a brush and again dry removal with a dry q-tip no mineral spirits and we're just going to blend this in this is going to pick up some of that dead flesh and since the goons grime has a tendency to dry matte now it's not going to dry completely matte over this high gloss finish that we have it will change the finish so it's going to be it's going to dry a little bit more satin as opposed to the high gloss and that's the same with the dead flesh that we added with an airbrush as we add it you can see that it's uh, a satin finish as opposed to the high gloss finish of the glue so we'll just add in a couple layers of this goons grime and this really pairs nicely with that filtering pass that we did with the coli green the goons grime over top of the coli green creates a wonderful gross looking color and then once again coming back in just doing just hitting a little bit more so when I was removing this, I may have removed a little bit too much, no problem. I'm just gonna add a little bit more of that dead flesh through the airbrush back on there. And remember, it's thinned down with a ton of mineral spirits. We want it to be highly translucent going on. And then again, just removing a little bit more. I really like the textures and stuff that we have on that ridge there right before we get to the spine. So I wanted to remove some of that dead flesh and reveal all that's going on right there and then once we get all that done we're just taking a look at the miniature here seeing what else we can do seeing what else needs to be adjusted and i think that i'll add a little bit more of the goons grime here just under the arm under that shoulder muscle so i'm just going to add it with a brush real lightly and then feather out the edges with just a clean brush and mineral spirits Try to keep it really dark, just right up under that muscle there. Clean it up with the Q-tip. All right, now we're super close to being finished with this, but it needs just a little bit more. So I'm looking at it, looking at it, thinking, what can I, what else can I do with it? Is it too white in places? Maybe. So we're gonna take a look and see what we can do to finish this off. So I'm gonna load my airbrush up with the Reichlin flesh shade and I'm going to start to apply very slight filtering just in some of these transitional areas so as you can see this is very carefully and lightly added to the miniature we want to make sure this is not overdone in any way we don't want to overdo or cover up too much of what we already worked on so you, you can see I'm just adding it a little bit to the top here just going to work down the neck a little bit, just a little bit. And this is just going to create a super slight filter. And in some places we can work it dark. We have the liberty to work it pretty dark and opaque right there where the wing comes into the spinal column. Maybe right here where this wound is going to be. Now we could add blood effects and stuff to this afterwards, but as far as just the flesh goes, you know, this is what we're going to do to finish it off. And I, I'm really looking forward to making an enamel this color. So I'm having to be super careful with this since it's an acrylic. It's not really going to be easy to remove off. So we're just being real careful with this application. And then one of the last things we're going to do, the very last thing, is I, I, I still think this reads just a little bit on the bright side. The whites are a little bit too punched up for me so what I'm going to do is I'm going to step way back away from the miniature I'm just going to spritz it super lightly just super light with the Reichland flesh shade just a couple spritz really far back from the miniature so I'm standing like maybe like two feet away my airbrush is like a foot and a half away now, so I'm really far back so once we get to this point guys I'm going to call it right there for this demonstration now, there are some other effects that we could certainly add to this, blood effects, and like I had mentioned before, maybe do a couple a uh, couple other techniques like hair and stuff like that would be cool in this miniature. 
blood effects, of course. And, uh, you know, we could, we could take it a little bit farther. But I'm going to, for this demonstration, I'm going to call it right there. If you want to watch the videos where we paint the rest of the entire miniature, you can find those on the Grimdark Compendium website. And also, just want to let you know that Gene Stiller Colts Episode 3 is going to be out today as well. So make sure to head over to the Grimdark Compendium and check that out. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, and we'll catch you in the next.